It continues to be a difficult time during this COVID-19 pandemic, difficult for those who are suffering themselves, those who have loved ones who have suffered, for those whose loved ones who have died from COVID. And Holy Trinity is no stranger to this disease. And we mourn the loss of some of our community members who have died and a number who have been hospitalized. And this is why we shelter in place and wear masks and social distance and YouTube our worship services. But there is another side to this pandemic as well. And that, of course, is the side of the economy. It is why we as a country seem to be at war with one another. You see, there are many who are suffering from this disease, but there are millions of people who are now under or unemployed. And again, our Holy Trinity family is no stranger to this and some wonder if there will be enough money to pay their bills. The rich seem to be getting richer and the poor getting poorer, and this not only happens during the time of COVID-19, but it seems while those who are invested in the stock market have more money and seem to watch their money rise, those who are working paycheck to paycheck are suffering greatly in this time. With hours cut or limited due to the lack of travel or eating out or limited store hours. So as with this time, Jesus, so it was in Jesus' time too. Okay, not the stock market or COVID-19, but there was certainly a divide in the classes. So in our gospel lesson today, it says that when the disciples came to Jesus and said, there isn't enough food, Jesus sees the crowd and need and feels compassion in their plight. I think that is a phrase we maybe skim over sometimes in this passage that Jesus had compassion on the people. We kind of take that for granted for Jesus, but think about the scene that just came before this one. Herod is hosting a party and a bash for the rich and powerful, and while we may regard this as the first century equivalent of an episode from the lifestyles of the rich and shameless, Herod's behavior was actually more the norm. You had money in order to spend it, and you had power in order to acquire more power, and you had privilege because you deserved it. So the assumption was, why do we need to provide for the poor? Obviously, they did something to deserve it. Moreover, a common picture of God in this ancient world was that of a supreme being who was by definition unchanging, unfeeling, and unmoved by the human plight. Now put this against the backdrop of the idea of the Son of God would even notice the need of the common folk, let alone have compassion on them and a need, and indeed, that was kind of miraculous. And that is our God who has compassion on us. And maybe that is the first miracle of the story, the amazement we have of a God who cares so deeply for each and every one of us. But more than compassion, God reaches out to us in our need and provides love and care. Jesus' compassion then compels the disciples to act. And so too, it should be for us. So while we may feel sympathy or compassion, how does that emotion result in action? Jesus cures the sick and the people in the crowds because he cared for them. Apparently, Jesus' healing had taken a great deal of time because his disciples come to him and suggest that he just send the crowd away. The disciples' request is not malicious. They simply are, uh, are aware of their location in this deserted place. And that time and the day turned into evening, and there's no McDonald's or Chick-fil-A or Taco Bell nearby. And so Jesus says to the disciples, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. And they replied, we have nothing but these five loaves and these two fish. Although the disciples' approach is pretty understandable, it's getting late and people are starting to get hungry. And Jesus seems perplexed by the disciples' request to send the people away. Why would they leave the disciples with lack of food? You see, Jesus had compassion and cared for these people which is where I think the second miracle comes in, the feeding of more than 5,000 men plus women and children. And instead of commanding them, he orders them to stay and sit on the grass. 
He gets to work doing what he has come to do, curing every disease and sickness among the people. And the miraculous demonstrates that Jesus attends to the physical needs of the people. So if the first miracle is that Jesus empathizes and has compassion on the people, maybe the second miracle in the story then is Jesus doesn't just miraculously make food appear, although I'm sure he could have done that. But Jesus works through his disciples that bring the problem to him to solve. They know they don't have enough food to feed all these people, so, but they, and so, of course, they want Jesus to send them away. But Jesus doesn't. He puts the problem squarely back on their shoulders by asking the disciples what food they have first. And when they offer these meager supplies, he takes and blesses what they bring him, and they use it to feed the thousands, which seems to be another significant miracle, that Jesus would invite them to take responsibility, accompany them into the midst of the challenges that confront them, and take and bless what they have, and this way involve them in the miracle. Maybe Jesus is still operating that way. Might Jesus also invite us to get off the sidelines and take responsibility for the problems we see among us? And Jesus promises then to accompany us into these challenges, to bless our efforts and whatever we might have to offer, and use it to work miracles. Over two years ago now, Holy Trinity after looking at our community and finding we wanted to serve Chandler more in a, in, in a different way because the church community had compare and compassion for those in our midst. And they wanted our neighbors to know God's love and God's grace. So as a result of that, they just decided that we would call Latino Outreach Coordinator. We knew in order to serve our community, we needed someone who could speak Spanish. So the congregation raised over $90,000 to call someone to Holy Trinity. And while this was a wonderful way to get started by itself, it wasn't quite enough. So God blessed this effort. And the Grand Canyon Synod and the ELCA came alongside us. And they matched $30,000 for the first three years. Matched what we had raised with special gifts. This was all wonderful, but more partners were needed along the way to do this ministry. So when Lewis arrived as our mission developer, we began a break camp for our elementary school children in our community, and we had wonderful volunteers, but we needed some additional dollars. So when it wasn't enough money, the community again came alongside to fund this camp, including Albertsons and Desert Cross Foundation and Thrivent, and many, many more. And God bless the efforts, and the camp has been growing every year. Last year, an after-school tutoring program began, and we provided volunteers and books, but we realized during the pandemic we needed computers for the children. And again, we didn't quite have all the funds for that, but Lord of Life Lutheran Church provided $3,000 for computers for our children this year. You see, when God calls and when we answer and are doing God's work, God blesses it and God provides for what we need and multiplies our efforts. And so maybe that is the third miracle for today, that God blesses what we do and God continues to multiply the efforts. We recognize that we are in very trying times but God continues to call us into ministry, into our community as we serve God and when we continue to serve God, God continues to bless and multiply the efforts. So in this particular time, I give thanks for the way you show compassion for each other and for this community and far beyond. And thanks be to God for this congregation who is called to serve beyond their walls and show compassion for God's people. And thanks be to God for multiplying those efforts. Amen. Reaching out.